Freshman Congressman George Santos is now being linked to possible ties to a Russian oligarch, according to a Washington Post report, a sanctioned oligarch, in fact. The newspaper detailing newly discovered links between Santos and the cousin of a Russian oligarch sanctioned by the U.S., according to video footage and court documents. The Post says that FEC filings show investor Andrew Intrader and his wife both donated the maximum allowed amount, a total of $11,600, to the Santos campaign. The investor also put hundreds of thousands of dollars into Harbor City Capital. That's a Florida firm that employed Santos before he ran for office, a firm the SEC has accused of running a Ponzi scheme in 2021. This is the FEC is looking into possible campaign finance violations, and Santos has not explained how he went from very few personal resources to donating $700,000 to his campaign war chest only two years later. Candidates can donate unlimited amounts to their campaigns, but there are strict limits on other contributions, and foreign nationals are never permitted to donate money to U.S. campaigns. The Post reports Santos has denied any wrongdoing. Neither Santos nor Intrader responded to NBC or to the Washington Post requests for comment. Santos denies doing anything unethical. And joining us now is Washington Post reporter Isaac Stanley Becker, one of the reporters behind this story who investigated this, and NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ryan Nobles. So, Isaac, first of all, this connection, the Russian connection, is really startling. I think he was also quoted, he was on camera, saying that he goes to Moscow frequently and you can make a lot of money there. This raises all kinds of red flags. That's right. I was struck by that footage as well. And we're trying to separate fact from fiction with this person. There's a whole web of lies surrounding him. And we're looking at the facts. We're trying to understand what are the financial forces behind this person, the financial figures behind this person. And that's why this benefactor of his, Andrew Introtter, is so important. Did he ever explain where he got the money to put $700,000 into his campaign? Well, he's explained very little. We know that in 2020, when he was first a candidate, he reported a salary of $55,000. Two years later, multiple millions. He's loaning his campaign $700,000. And he says he was employed by basically a family company with no public-facing profile, no record of clients. And so we're trying to figure out who were his clients, who is he working for, and where is he getting all of this money? And, in fact, the, that whole Moscow connection, we do have that on tape. Let's play that. You show up with $100 and you get 6,000 rubles. And you can do a lot with 6,000. I mean, I've been to Moscow many times during my career. I mean, you stay at the St. Regis on the Red Square, right off the Red Square, next to the Gum Museum, which is the most expensive shopping mall in the world. So, Ryan Nobles... George Santos says that he's been to Moscow, you know, many times. Uh, that's a gettable fact. They, you know, the feds can check that. We don't know what's fact and what's fiction with him, but why doesn't this create a bigger problem for House Republicans? Well, it, it has created a big problem for them, Andrea, but it can't escape the fundamental fact that they have such a slim majority in the House of Representatives right now, only four seats. Uh, and if they were to force George Santos to resign, to encourage him to resign, uh, it would leave an open seat that would go to a special election. The seat itself would likely be open for uh, as long as three months, perhaps even longer, before the special election could take place. And then you'd have a competitive race in which Democrats would have uh, an equal shot, perhaps even a better shot of taking that seat back. So from Kevin McCarthy's perspective, having Santos's vote is much more valuable to him, even with the baggage that comes along with it. Now, we have seen, you know, a small number of House Republicans, many of them George Santos's fellow Republican freshmen from New York who have called on him to resign. But Santos has doubled down and said there's just no way he's going to resign. He knows that it would take a lot more uh, to actually forcibly remove him from his seat. So at this point, Andrea, he's not going anywhere, and there's nothing Kevin McCarthy is going to do to encourage him to do anything but stay in that seat for as long as possible. I mean, I, I understand the politics and, you know, the reasons why with such a small majority he wants every vote, but I don't know how you defend it when you have someone who is not only um, a fraud on paper in terms of the resume, but with these very serious questions about the campaign and the Russia connection. Um, Isaac, so George Santos's former roommate, Gregory Maury Parker, spoke to CNN earlier. So let's watch that. 
the biggest thing that I took away from it was like just delusions of grandeur. Like he he would just go to bars with, you know, like rolls of hundred dollar bills. And, you know, three days later he would have no money. You knew him at through another name, right? The last name DeVolder. Yes. I'm, I've, I've always known him as Anthony DeVolder. I've yeah. never known him as George Santos. So that was a name that he used. He was his middle name and his mother's maiden name. And through all of this, what do we know about this Russian oligarch who's been sanctioned by the U.S. is close to Putin? Well, we, what we know is that this is a cousin of Andrew Introtter, whom George Santos has claimed as a client. Now, uh, Victor Vexelberg, the Russian oligarch, runs his company. Andrew Introtter has a U.S.-based company. But there are historic deep ties between these two companies. And as recently as 2018, when Mr. Vexelberg was sanctioned by the U.S., uh, the company Mr. Intrader's company confirmed that the Russian conglomerate was his largest client. So these are deeply enmeshed entities. Well, and more to come, of course. And Ryan, I know you're on the case. And Isaac, thank you so much for all of your reporting. It's a fascinating story with a lot at stake. <laughs>